Alright guys, this is another cool rainy day. Feeling like uh, Oregon in April here in uh, the Finger Lakes of New York on this gray Saturday morning. It is July <coughs> 10th, 2021, so while the rest of the country burns <coughs> I'm actually a little chilly sitting here in this Hawaiian shirt, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, yesterday I did, we had a view from Zombie Island, uh, with Andy the Gardener, uh, talking about, you know, how, about aliens coming to save the planet, how it's, uh, it, pointless at this point to try to save this planet because this planet is fucked because the planet's fucked. And anyway, Mark J., my buddy out in New Mexico, took issue with Andy the Gardener. So uh, we're going to have a point counterpoint. So we're going to get the view from Wes Bumblefuck. From the view from Zombie Island to the view from West Bumblefuck mainly looking at the question, can humans change? And the, well, I'm going to read uh, Mark J's comments, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to play referee. Who is right? Is Andy the Gardener right that humans are genetically hardwired to be unable to change our planet-eating ways to this point from... Mark J. from my, who is a, I consider Mark a uh, personal friend of mine. I have nothing but respect for this man. So uh, here I am having to play referee between Andy the Gardener and Mark J. And uh, we will see how the judgment falls here. <clears throat> but take it away, Mark J., and uh, give Andy the Gardener an ass whipping. <clears throat> Gardener may or may not be correct in his conclusions regarding the fate of humans and the planet. <clears throat> the unfolding dynamics and what appears to be collapse are numerous and complex, and there are dynamics that we are not even aware of, you know, those unknown unknowns. <clears throat> So anyone's predictions at this point are simply conjecture, regardless of how passionately one may feel about his or her beliefs. However, in conjecture about anything, the facts that can be established should be recognized. Gardner states that, quote, they, meaning the aliens, would know that humans are hardwired, like all life forms in the universe, to behave in a rigid, set pattern as governed by their genetic programming, so they would have known already that changing was absolutely impossible." Close quote. That statement, you know, according to Mark J., is patently false. I don't know what Gardner is reading, but clearly he is not reading cutting-edge research in the dynamics of human consciousness done by people like the brilliant Bruce Lipton, and I dare say that he is not interested in reading it. His mind, Andy the Gardner's mind, is made up. Lipton has proved that Gardner's statement that humans are so hardwired is false, and that is no small fact to overlook or be mistaken about. If one chooses to have the maturity to be broad-minded and consider all of the dynamics in the equation, Lipton has even proved incorrect the long-standing medical belief that humans are genetically hardwired to contract specific diseases like breast cancer. Perhaps the most significant way in which humans differ from other animals is in their 
not being hardwired to behave in certain ways. If Gardner was doing much reading at all in the astonishing revelations of the new sciences, he would know that. If he doesn't want to know that, and I mean no disrespect, then he is only one small step ahead of climate change deniers. Humans are wont to believe that they what they want to believe, unfortunately, which explains why the world is in the shape that it's in. However, they're not higher they're not hardwired to do that either. Commentaries in which people with opinions are not broad minded enough to lay all of the known facts on the table are entertaining at best and destructive at worst and anything that promulgates ignorance on vital subjects is destructive. They certainly contribute nothing to problem solving and in my view the person who focuses on problem solving is the adult in the room. Sadly, the majority of people are not of the latter mindset and if the new sciences has taught us anything, it is that people should carefully examine their fixed beliefs because most of them are incorrect. Now that I've wasted my time in making that comment, I'm going to get on with reading the late Michael Talbot's extraordinary book, Mysticism and the New Physics, in which he points out that human intention can even affect machines such as random number generators. Talbot, among many others, disproves Gardner's assertion that humans are hardwired to behave as they do. Actually, there is one area in which we are hardwired. We are hardwired as are other species for intimacy and cooperation. It is our freedom to cling to false beliefs and behave accordingly with those beliefs that allows us to live contrary to intimacy and cooperation with the consequence of our immense suffering and destruction on the planet. One of the necessary steps in mitigating this dire condition is to wake up, dismantle the goddamned ego, and learn what there is to be learned, which is more than one can learn in his lifetime. Our problem is ignorance of who and what we are, and so our vast potential for problem solving remains untapped. We may take some perverse pleasure from living in ignorance, but it is destroying us and there is nothing about it worthy of admiration. There you go. Thank you, uh, Mark J. Uh, Irk1 here in Ithaca says, I vote a rare behavior for this rebuttal to be read aloud. So you heard, I read it aloud, Irk, and my response, my initial response to, uh, to Mark J was, as Paul Simon once said when he was about 22 years old, quote, all lies and jest, still a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. The best line that Paul Simon ever wrote. With that, I am taking my hardwired goddamn ego back to Lowe's for two more boards. And I see I have a response to that from Mark J. A quote from Herbert, Herbert Spencer, I can't remember who Herbert is, quote, There is a principle 
which is a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments, and which cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance, that principle is contempt prior to investigation. All right, so I'm in the unenviable, unenviable position of, okay, who do we give the nod to? Andy the gardener or Mark J? Well, the problem here, guys, is uh, I am not well versed enough. I am not a geneticist and I have not read the works of uh, the folks that Mark J suggests, although I've, I've watched a few bit videos and dabbled in it, but it, it is kind of irrelevant. The whole discussion whether Andy the gardener uh, is right or Mark J is right, because Mark, <clears throat> again, and, and I mean absolutely no disrespect to this, I am going to give my nod toward Andy the gardener, not necessarily that I'm 100% convinced that humans are genetically hardwired to be unable to change. I don't know uh, about, I'm, I'm not a geneticist, I am not uh, able to comment on that, however, I have been studying this whole thing uh, for at least 12 years down the rabbit hole and of course using my own life as an example that so how many times have I said in in 2008 when I pulled my head out of my ass and and realized uh, what a horrible uh, life I was living living in a beautiful home uh, owning, what was it, was it four or five other houses, uh, two cars, uh, my, as I say, my beautiful home on the Green Belt in Austin, Texas, hundreds of friends, uh, women in my life, top shelf liquor and weed. I took a look around and said, this is no way to live, Hambone. So I moved off to the Peruvian uh, jungle uh, to live out the rest of my lives. Here I am 12 years later living in a 384 square foot tumble down shack uh, in, you know, out here in the boonies in upstate New York. So my guess is <clears throat> I did change. I changed uh, 12, 13 years ago and reduced my, quote, carbon environmental uh, footprint, I'm guessing by about 90%. I probably use 10% of this planet's resources uh, that I did 13 years ago. <clears throat> Saying that, I realized that if everybody on this planet used as much of this planet's resources that I use every day in my life, this planet uh, would have blown up 50 years ago. Uh, talking to someone who has changed and, and did reduce their impacts on this planet, uh, but 90% don't cut it. Nowhere near. Uh, so, whether or not, so I, I am living proof that humans can change. And if I wanted to, I could change a whole lot more. I could become a lot more like Andy the gardener. And uh, I don't, I've never understood what kind of house Andy the gardener lives in. I don't know. I don't know how big of a house Andy lives in. I have no idea because it's none of my fucking business where Andy the gardener 
gets the, the probably very limited amount of money that even he needs to live. I do know that Andy the Gardener is number one. He is not a breeder, and neither is Mark J, and neither am I. So the three of us, uh, you can't blame it on any of the three of us. All three of us are non-breeders. Uh, Andy does not own a car. Uh, he does not fly in airplanes. He is a vegan. He is a non-breeder. Andy the gardener walks his talk more than any human being I have ever met. And don't take this wrong, Mark. <laughs> Andy the gardener's environmental carbon footprint is a hell of a lot less than mine. It's a hell of a lot less than yours. Uh, but anyway, so, but I think Andy was, uh, what were in arch he majored in architecture in college and realized, I guess, right when he got out of college that he did not want to pursue a lifetime in architecture. So Andy the gardener, he got rid of his car and everything. So Andy the gardener is an example of someone who changed. Hambone Littletail is a is is a, an example of someone who changed. Mark, I honestly don't know. Uh, I, I'm not sure of what your environmental footprint looked like. Uh, 20 years ago before you pulled your head out of your ass to understand how fucked this planet is. But <clears throat> the whole point is it's an irrelevant conversation whether or not humans can change. Humans can change. And this planet will force humans to change or die. Uh, what was it John Michael Greer saying? You know, learn how to grow or organic vegetables, learn how to hoe or die. Uh, you're you're going to change, we're going to change or we're going to die. And of course, my vote is we're going to die, not because we cannot change, it's because we do not want to change. For every little eco-Nazi like Hambone Littletail or Andy the Gardener, maybe, maybe not, uh, Mark J. reducing their carbon environmental footprint on this planet, <clears throat> for every one of us, there are 100 people uh, in China, India, everywhere else going the opposite direction. The only change people want to make is having more money, more material possessions, more energy, a bigger fucking house, a bigger fucking car. This is the change that people want. They want more, more, more. Uh, the vast majority, the, uh, the people like me and Andy the Gardener, uh, and, and again, I am not changing nearly enough, uh, the, the number of human beings on, on this planet making any, any sort of uh, sacrifice in, in the, uh, uh, towards what, the way we need to be living, uh, it, 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 it's minuscule. It, 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 it is a fucking little mud puddle compared to the Pacific Ocean. Mark, you know this, brother. You know this. Uh, I, 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 you know, everything you said could be 100% correct. Everything that Lipton and that other guy and we were... I was talking with Rob yesterday about Rupert Sheldrake, that that whole gang, every single thing they are saying could be true, and it makes zero fucking difference uh, on the on the state of this planet. Zero difference. Uh, it's it, it, the the tsunami. Uh, that, that we're going up against, that this tiny, tiny little awakening by, by one one-hundredth of one percent of this planet means nothing in, in, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, 
all lies and jest, still a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. And what people want to fucking hear is how they can get a bigger fucking car, make more fucking money, get a bigger fucking house. That's what they want to hear. And they disregard the rest. It's, and there's this other great song by Greg Brown. Uh, you know, you can't play music because of these fucking copyright songs. I, I think the name of the song, you can look it up. I think it's called Who'd A Thunk It. Who'd A Thunk It. It's a hilarious song. And what Greg Brown is pointing out, he's talking about this very subject. Uh, that people, uh, they, they act like they want to change. They, they, they make these fucking little, uh, you know, patting themselves on the back statements, how they're going to fucking change for the better and all of this, but it ain't going to happen because they don't want to change. They, they can spout all of this fucking bullshit out of their mouths, how they're going to fucking change, put a fucking solar panel on their fucking roof, put a fucking windmill out in the yard, put their, their little electric vehicle, uh, eat fucking steamed kale the rest of their fucking life. People don't want to change, Mark. They don't want to. It ain't going to happen. It's not because they can't. It's not because there's not a way. There is no will. There is no fucking will to change on an individual level. There's no fucking will to change on a community level, a fucking political level, on a global level. As Greg Brown says, you can't eat a horse because you don't want to. Anyway, I gotta wrap up this uh, little rebuttal to Andy the Gardener and uh, decide whether or not to do a chronicle of the collapse before I get outside and start moving a goddamn wood pile across the yard because it's in my view. So I'm going to go change the location of my wood pile because I want to. Bye, guys. Little dog, I think we're going to have kind of a short chronicle of the collapse. It's going to be a short one because we got to get out there and move that wood pile right now.